Y'all want a statement or y'all? All right, here's the statement. Obviously, we're happy to be 3-0. and um, I thought that the guys gave good effort tonight. I thought that the uh, fans were into the game, so I applaud them for that. I thought that the crowd was bigger tonight. So I, I think at the end of the day, we're building a little bit, but we've got a long ways to go in that regard. Um, and, and probably the most important takeaway from the game is we need to learn how to finish. We need to learn how to finish people off when you get up 18 points and uh, and 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 play winning basketball as we get away from playing winning basketball and then uh, we put ourselves in a bind a little bit. The guy said you you came in and you put 16 to 2 up on the board. Yeah, I mean we gave up a 16 to 2 run. We're up 18 points and we gave up a 16 to 2 run. I mean, it makes no sense. <laughs> it makes no sense to do that. Now, with that being said, um, I allowed them to kind of sit in it a little bit because I want it, I want them to figure things out. I, I can't call timeouts and and always write this ship. Like we've got to figure out a way to get enough internal leadership to write this ship when things go go bad, right? And uh, every team in America needs that, but we certainly need that. So I did allow them to probably. Um, you know, hang themselves a little bit, if you will. It's probably a bad term to use, but but um, allowed them to to kind of figure it out on their own. Is that you don't want it to happen? But is that going to be good experience for this group to look back? We need all the experience we can get, right? I mean, we're we played three games in the in the friendly confines of our arena. We're about to go on the road, and we're about to play good competition. Um, so we we've we've need every bit of experience and every bit of. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. We we need every bit of um, chaos. We need every bit of getting behind. We need every bit of getting ahead and, and losing it and having to right the ship and get back. We need all of that because we've got so many new guys, right? And they've played good basketball, but they've played good basketball at other places for other, other people in other systems. How much of it was just not being smart in that 16 2 run when you're up eight? I need to go watch the film before I can really answer that, but just off the top of my head, some of it was absolutely just ill advised shots or just lack of communication and getting matched up defensively. You know, like we went under a ball screen, we don't ever go over under ball screens, um, and we gave up a three. So simple stuff like that. Um, that, that it, it, they didn't do anything complicated that should make us do what we did. There, there's no rhyme or reason, to be very honest with you, as to why we did a couple of things that we did. Okay. Can you handle a football analogy? Sure. Okay. Your defense, and I, and I know that's, uh, that's, that's a paradigm. Going to play defense here or, or nothing. But the defense right now seems to be – you give up some shots, and they, they shot pretty well. I mean, Tom's up here 51%, shaking the head. I get that. But the turnovers are awesome. And that's, you know, it's just like in football. You can have a defense gives up a lot, but they take the ball away a lot. And you can survive with it. I don't care what sports you're playing. If you get more possessions than the other, the other team, you're going to give yourself a better opportunity to win basketball games. Right? But Tom is 100% right. Our, our three-point defense, especially in the first half, was not good. But that's largely because we're getting beat off the dribble or we're getting beat on closeouts. And now we've got to come over and help. And now you're helping, and we don't help the helper. And so now they're spraying it out, and they're shooting wide-open shots. But yeah, I mean, forcing, what did we force, 17, 19 turnovers? No, I'm sorry, 18 turnovers? It's fantastic. Um, I think that our our level of aggression is good, but now you've got to have some discipline with that, right? And, and you've got to know that, okay, I'm closing out to this guy who's maybe not a great three-point shooter, and I know he's going to drive it to his right because we've told you over and over in scouting report, and now you've got to apply it, right? And, and that's got to be the next step. Just like, you know, again, closing out and finishing games has got to be the next step. I ask Abu about, uh, you know, violation of team rules, how he needs, his team needs it. You can look at his line across. He's a real good contributor in a lot of ways. He said he learned his lesson. 
I mean, you're, you're obviously welcome to ask any question you want. I've already answered the question, you oh, know. Oh, no, I went here Sunday to hear your first answer. Yeah, the right. answer is, is a violation of team rules. We handled it within our, our program, and we're glad to have him back. But um, whether it's Abu or, or Steve Lutz or anybody in the program, we have standards that have to be upheld, and, and we've got to stick to those. Talk it's it's more that. than – go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, talk about him coming back tonight, though and producing across the score like you did. Yeah, I mean, he was a handful tonight. Those guys had a hard time. We've got to get him the ball more, to be very frank with you. I mean, I thought that he did a good job sealing. We threw the ball over the top a couple times. We ran a couple plays a couple times, but he, he kept the ball alive. He rebounded the basketball, and, uh, and he was a, a shot in the arm, you know. So we need to have him back for the rest of the year, but uh, I thought tonight he was, he was fantastic. You've seen Brandon have a lot of good scoring performances. Scott, what did it? Uh, what did you like about his his offensive game today? Yeah, I thought Brandon did a good job picking his spots. Right, I mean, he drove the basketball only when he had an opportunity, and he shot open threes. And uh, I think that when you're when you're doing those things, or when he's doing those things, he's going to be successful more than not. I was really surprised. He's usually one of our better rebounders, and he didn't have a lot of rebounds tonight. I was I was really surprised by that. I've just I need him to continue to be more solid on the defensive end. But uh, no, Brandon, I've I've said that several times to you guys before. He's proved time and time again across you know Division One basketball that he can score. With as fast as you guys play, it, he seems probably because he's he's played in this before. He seems a little maybe calmer than the others. Is, is that something that, that you'd agree with? I think he's always kind of been that way. He doesn't usually get too high and too low. You know, if you watch his facial expressions and those sorts of things, um, he's just always flatline, and that's kind of been the thing with Brandon all all along his career. So uh, he's played a lot of basketball, a lot of winning basketball, a lot of winning high level basketball. So you know, he shouldn't be. Uh, he shouldn't be awed by anything that we've seen. Yet, you know, you added two guys to the 2025 class this week. Can you talk a little bit about what you saw in Ryan and Ragland? Yeah, obviously, I think that uh, both of those guys are good players. I'm excited to sign a couple high school kids. You know, hopefully, we can we can get those guys to stick around for a while and continue to build our program and build our culture and have them in the system for a while. And, and uh, you know, Ryan Crotty's a prolific shooter. But he's not just a one-trick pony. I mean, he can put the ball down on the floor. Um, he can rebound the basketball, and, and uh, he's going to be a nice fit here because, you know, when you, he catches the basketball, you have to guard him at 26, 27 feet. He's that good of a shooter. Um, and then Makai Raglan, man, he's going to be a good player in time. It's going to take him a little bit of time, um, and he's got to work at it, and he's going to get in better shape, and he's got to get healthy and all those sorts of things. But he reminds me of a young man that we had at uh, at Purdue named Travion Williams, and Travion uh, – came in and he really, really worked and got himself into shape. By the end of his career, he was an all-Big Ten player. And uh, he's still playing overseas, making a lot of money. So I'm excited about both of them. Um, obviously, we're still in the hunt for for others. Um, and we'll see what happens here later this week. Was it easier when you were sort of recruiting those guys and identifying them? Was it, you know, obviously with this group that you had to bring in, you, you kind of had a lot of unknowns and you kind of had to plug in. Was it easier to kind of identify what you were looking for with these two guys? No, I mean, you're always looking for skill and you're always looking for size. You know, I mean, the hardest things usually to get are point guards and big guys and then guys that can can really, really shoot and play. So, um, I, no, I mean, we obviously worked hard at, at recruiting the current class. And then as soon as that was over, we flipped to recruiting that next class. And, uh, you know, I, I'm excited about those guys. I think they're going to be good good in time. They're going to be very good for us. How unique is it to have a guy Makai's size that can kind of do some of the things he do? He's got a nice touch, got good feet. And just how unique is that for a guy that was playing in Georgia? Yeah, no, I mean, he's, he's, he's great at, he's got great soft hands and then he's, he's big and wide and, and he seals really, really well. But, you know, somebody asked me uh, yesterday, maybe, excuse me, what his best skill is. And it might be his passing. I think he can really pass the basketball and He's going to be able to stretch the floor because he can shoot. Um, he's just going to have to be able to get at the pace of the game. You know, obviously we play a certain style, but I, I think that uh, I think that he's got a, a great future ahead of him. Both of those guys, I, I'm excited about both. Two things that have their own challenges. Is it 
is it harder to take a high school player and try to get him ready for the collegiate level, or is it harder to take a player out of the transfer portal? And he's college ready, but you have to mold him to your system and maybe break some bad habits. I think both uh, pose the same challenge, right? You're still trying to get them to um, understand the level of play here and how hard you have to play and with the, the effort you have to play every single day. I mean, uh, whether you're, you know, you're coming from high school or whether you're coming from the portal, it, it, it's different. I mean, we just we play a certain brand of basketball, and um, you know, so there's always going to be adjustment. But you know, if you were going to pick between the two, I guess it's probably a little bit harder for a high school kid just because they're not used to having the same athletes come at them in waves every single possession. You know, there's there's not as many good players in high school on the teams. Your thoughts on Charleston now? And uh, man, I'm excited. Team. I'm excited about Charleston. I think it's going to be a great opportunity for us to grow as a team. Right, and, and, and you're going to play good teams. You're going to be away from home. We have nothing to do other than concentrate on basketball. Right, We'll get our studies done and all that kind of stuff. But now you're going into an environment where you don't have that crowd behind you tonight. And uh, you've got to manufacture your own energy among your team. And, and anytime you go on the road, man, you have an opportunity for your team to grow closer collectively. Right, And, and we've got to use this opportunity Excuse me. We've got to use this opportunity to do that. Um, so I'm really excited. Um, as much as I love playing in, in Gallagher, Iba, I'm excited to go play um, competition outside and, and also get a little seafood while we're there. What was, uh, what was Steve like after that? I imagine he wasn't too stoked about the, the run that they had there at the end. Oh, no, not at all. Um, as soon as we came in after the game was over, we rode 10 to 0 and 16 to 2. Basically, we, had a, we gave up a 10 to 0 run and then we gave up a 16 to 2 run. Um, in that second half, so. What uh, what did you guys kind of think of the game, both of you guys? Uh, we had our good moments. Um, we had all, up all the way to 18, probably the highest of the year. Um, we just got to keep finding ways to sustain in that energy, that level of defense, um, commitment. But if we continue doing that, we'll be in pretty good shape. What, what's that kind of going to take, Brandon, to to keep a keep defense going for a full 40 minutes? Yeah, I mean, our, our word of the week has been discipline all week. Um, like Boo said, we have we have some really good moments. We'll, we'll get a lead, but then we'll kind of we'll get away from the stuff that got us that lead. Um, and once we be able to, you know, sustain, you know, just following our rules and playing the way we know how to play, then we'll we'll, we'll be we'll be in good hands. You guys are really deep at guard. You've kind of been picking your spots throughout the year, but you got to go off for 18 a day. Just kind of what were you seeing out there? I was just playing the game for what it was. Uh, honestly, not thinking too much. Just taking open shots, uh, playing defense, you know, just playing within the system. It seemed like I, you hit a moment where it just felt like everything you shot was going in. I don't know, could you feel that? I mean, I, I expect to, to, to make more shots than I missed, to be honest. But, I mean, uh, my teammates did a good job of finding me and getting me open and setting screens for me, too. Um, and, and, you know, the ball found the rim. Uh, I'm not going to ask you what the violation of team rules were or whatever it cost you Sunday, but. You can see, I mean, just look at the numbers across the whole scorebook, uh, how much you can impact this team and how much they need you to, to be there, right? Yes, sir. Um, I learned my lesson. A um, little setback for, you know, major comeback the way I was looking at it. Um, I'm just glad to be back with the team, honestly, and be able to play hard. You had some slam dunks that got everybody's attention tonight, the alley-oop and all that. But it looked to me like the most fun you had was when you tight up the baseline and kicked it out to Cheeky yeah. for the three. Yeah. Uh, I just like seeing my teammates happy. Um, knowing Chi, that's going to get him going. And once you have Chi in the locked in game the whole time, like, you don't know what could happen. We could blow the lead up to 20 25. Um, so I just enjoy that part of the game, seeing my teammates happy. Can you, can you take me through that block on the perimeter that you had? Uh, I just helped defense, um, playing by the principles. Um, one man got beat. He went up already. Um, so I timed it well and blocked it. That's about it. Brandon, how does playing with multiple guards who can you know, push the pace fast, how does, that, how does that help your game specifically? It makes my job easy. I just got to you know, sprint to four, get to the corner, space, you know, when they're, when they're driving it at me, you know, and, and make myself available. For both of y'all, uh, as a team, are y'all getting more comfortable pushing the pace, maybe even faster this game than, than maybe the previous two? Yeah, I, we'll, we'll continue to get better, that, better at that as the season goes on. Um, aside from 
you know, the defensive side of the ball. Like, we, we, we've been showing improvement every game of, you know, keeping that pace. Could you just talk about the pace? Uh, pace is going to keep getting better. Like, being you said, game by game, we'll just keep getting better. Are you, are you guys excited? And you guys have obviously spent a lot of time together at this point, but still a fairly new team. You excited to go on the road with each other and, and kind of sure. bond sure. that way? For sure. Yeah, it'll be our first, you know, test on the road. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it's at a neutral site, but, you know, we won't be playing here at uh, Gallagher, so it'll be fun. Coach Lutz to take you to some good restaurants. Charleston's. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Charleston's. <laughs> good town, man. You <laughs> need to scope that out in advance. What they're going for? What type of food? I mean, so everything. Everything. Yeah, you can get a little bit of seafood. Okay. You can get some good southern cooking. Mm -hmm. uh, soul food. So, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. <laughs> and mm -hmm. barbecue. Okay. Carolina barbecue. There's everything there, man. Okay. Take your word for it. I'll okay. let you know. You point it. Look. <laughs> Hey, baby. I know, I know my way around Charleston. <laughs> Brandon, do you feel – does it feel like a similar offense that, that you guys are running at Western Kentucky? Do you, do you feel comfortable in the offense even though there, there are all these new pieces because you've spent that time with uh, Coach? Yeah, because, I mean, like the, the f philosophies or the, the – what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the point he's trying to get across is still the same. You know, point guards push to the elbows, wings get to the corner. You know, if you're the first big down seal to see if the point guard can get a layup, four-man trail, like it's all the same stuff. Being the gap on defense, like deny, deny the ball, pressure the ball, I like guess it's, it's all the same stuff. Do you take that upon yourself then to if somebody's struggling, if somebody's looking a little sped up, to, to calm them down and, and get them going again? Yeah, I think we all are doing a good job. Like, there's multiple voices in our huddles, and, you know, we're always make sure we're, you know, we're huddled up on the court as well, too. This is for both you guys, too. I think 19 is the most assists you've had in the first three games, and the shooting was good. Are you guys starting to know where guys want the ball better and, and starting in a game to get used to, okay, I'm going to see him over there, that kind of deal? Sure. I think we had a we had a couple possessions in that second half where um, we we had four, five, six um, touches and ended up you know running down the shot clock and getting a bucket. I, I remember Boo getting a post up at the end of end of a play in the second half where pretty much everybody touched the ball and we ended up getting a bucket.